They want to run a story about life in care homes, and I suggested Tracy might be the right person to write it. So, fancy helping me dish the dirt on the dumpy ground? Uh, stop right there, Tracy. No gossip and no scandal. What? What am I supposed to write about? Well, they want the article to reveal the truth about life in care, so tell them how tough it is. You know, it's not just hanging out all day with your mates playing pool. Oh, there are deeper issues about family and loneliness, abandonment, all that sort of stuff. So we can't mention Mike? No. Or Shelley? No. Not even the name? Definitely part. not. No one's got one. <laughs> Look, if I was writing it, I'd go for gritty social realism. Do you know what I mean? Note to self. Get a dictionary. And a dictaphone. Taxi for Miss Carol Lawson. You're late. No tip for you. Uh, that is rank. Oh, nice to see you too, Tracy. I'm not a dog, Gary. It's not working. He's lost forever. Wait. I'm getting something. Stones may break my bones. Now, if I break them first. Hi, Roxy. We're looking for Layla's dog Rufus. Have you seen him? Maybe. What does he look like? He's got tough brown fur, long ears, and a pink tongue. Not anymore. He hasn't. Rufus! to keep my stuff in, so it's poor his stepping out. Uh, look, <laughs> he's got a lovely new collar and a cute little hat. That's not a hat. I sold his ear back in the wrong place. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Here. Put this on. It's a charm necklace blessed with mystical powers. How does it work? You close your eyes, turn around a few times and make a wish. And a fairy queen appears, waves a magic wand, and turns you into a princess, I suppose. <laughs> Don't be silly. That's my necklace with the glass beads. One. Two. I told you the necklace was magic. Yeah, Mike. Right. There's no one there. So much for your stupid necklace. Where did you come from? Dogs can't talk, stupid. She must need to replace Rufus. The necklace works. To ever find me, my owners have split up and can't look after me anymore. They've left me here because she'll look after unwanted things. Oh, she can write too. Are you ever going to grow a bone? <laughs> the harsh reality of life in care. Where are you going to start? <laughs> I'm not going to write that twaddle. You know? Don't you know how the adult mind works? Cam only wants me to write about how rubbish it is living at the dump one because she thinks it's going to make me want to move back in with her. So what are you going to write about? Isn't it obvious? I write about how fun it is living at the dumping ground and what a great laugh we all have. There's no way that she can stay here. I've got some potential foster parents coming round later and I don't want anything to put them off. Please! Shelley? I can't have dogs running round the place. But she's been dumped, so there's no one left to look after her. Guess I can. She's going to need food, exercise, entertainment. Just like us. 
What, are you saying way too much hassle? No, I meant that... Uh, we could always drop her off at a rescue centre if you'd like. Fantastic idea. She'd be well looked after. Yeah, just like here, really. Like a sort of care home for dogs till they find new owners. Wouldn't that be great? Just like here, but not here. Yeah, but what happens to dogs that nobody wants to foster? Well, there are... Well, uh... to taste my meat pie. It was my necklace that brought her here, so we've got to help. Why can't she just go to a rescue centre? Because if no one wants to foster her... Don't be daft. They don't do that. She'll be like us, in care until she finds a home. But she might not find a home without our help. Then she's come to the right place, with the fostering experts. Just think of what we can do with all our experience. She's doing it. We could make posters and stick them on lampers. Now we're talking. What's her name? Uh, she hasn't got one yet. Daisy. That's a cow's name. My grandma was called Daisy. That dog definitely reminds me of someone. Tracy! What? The dog, it looks like Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Two beakers in one dumping ground. It's gotta be bad news. We better get cracking. Come on, people, let's show this dog that she's not alone. Do you think that not having parents bossing you about is the biggest advantage about living in care? Well, there is Shelley. <laughs> and Elaine. So they boss us around and tell us what to do? True. Uh, the food. The food here is great, isn't it? It was. Until Duke left. Mm. Okay, okay, forget that question. Um, let's start with something easier. What would you say is your favourite thing about living at the dumping ground? Second favourite thing? This is a masterpiece. You need a heart of stone not to be moved by this. Rubbish. Like I said, heart of stone. Just one more thing. Oh, please. You don't actually believe that. Good girl. What? Turn it in. You must be the Lucas. Please, come in. I'm Shelley Appleton. Is it safe to leave the Ferrari there? Oh, my. Yes, of course. Only two seats, so you won't be taking anyone with you today, then. <laughs> no, we've got people carrying for that. You can get at least six in the back, easy. We just brought a tennis court opposite the swimming pool. Oh, it'll be so lovely to have someone to share it all with us. <laughs> when can I move in? <laughs> I don't know about you, Rob, but uh, I'm going to change my socks. <laughs> A big old gothic mansion with towers, spires and gargoyles. Sounds pretty spooky. Oh, it is. But if you can live with the cobwebs, it's great. not being very helpful. Then you're trying to make this place sound like a holiday camp. Face it, living in care is dull and boring. Don't you mean a relaxed atmosphere and plenty of recreation time? At last, we're getting somewhere. Anything to add, Crash? Well, there's no privacy for starters. No privacy. Don't you mean constant care and attention? And there's no peace and quiet. People are always arguing and shouting. Lively atmosphere. <laughs> this is good stuff. Keep it coming. Our 
Dad, you always hated being in care. Now oh, stop whinging. If it was so bad, why did you leave the sports academy and come limping back? That's well out of order. Temper, temper. Okay, I admit it. Living in the dumping ground is absolutely brilliant. It must be. Why else would somebody who actually had a chance to have a real home give it up and move back? You have to come down and meet these people. We've got a whole range of children here. The only problem is getting them all together in the one place. Good afternoon. My name's Leo Willard. It's a pleasure to meet you. May I introduce some of my friends? Millie. Alice. Leila. Pleased to meet you. Wolfie. Bonjour. Lol. Marco. And this is. Who are you? Your sister. Uh, of course. This is Roxy. <laughs> what an adorable group of children. Oh, I just wish I could take all of you. Great. If you come back with a people carrier, we could be ready and packed in, say, half hour. <laughs> oh, and who's this? Are you looking to get fostered too? No. 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 Well, this is Tracy. She's had a very hard life and is looking for a good home. Please foster her. Oh, couldn't leave a cute little thing like you here now, could we? No, she might look cute, but actually she's <laughs> got them leaves. She ruined your sofa. She isn't house trained. She smells, she's vicious, she's ferocious. What's going on? Right. 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 Perhaps we better foster a dog to start with. See how it goes. Let me get this straight. You came here to foster a child and you're leaving with a dog. She needs a good home. We all do. This isn't a holiday camp. It isn't fun living here, and you've got the opportunity to change someone's life. Are you going to give it to a dog? I'm sorry, we've made up our minds. We're taking Tracy. Me? No, Tracy, the dog. Well, that's her name, isn't it? dog is called Tracy. You named that wiry-haired flea bag Tracy. It was her. It was yeah, the girl. It was Just the girl I was looking for. There's a present for you in the driveway. A dog of yours must have left it. Clean it up, could you? Alice! Oh, you. Stick around. There's more beaker to come. Think of laughing, Mike Milligan, whoever did this is in so much trouble. <laughs> it's not funny. I want whoever's done this to own up right now. Well? It wasn't me. What's going on? <gasps> cool, who iced Elaine? <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> this is serious. Elaine's clothes are ruined and the office needs cleaning. Now, who did it? Um, Shelley. I wonder if Justine knows something we don't. After all, she did arrive later than everyone else. Um, why don't you hop back under your stone, Bex? Touched a guilty nerve if I, Justine. Actually, Rebecca, you're wrong. At the time of the incident, Justine was with me in the quiet room. 
and then you multiply by 24. <coughs> Elaine. She probably got a finger stuck in a disk drive or something. I'll see what's going on. You just finish your homework. So, Justine, seeing as you're the only one I can rule out, you can go. Everyone else will sit here until the culprit owns up. But that's not fair. You tell him, Justine. Jackie and Crash will come in cinema with me. We've got tickets and everything. We're not going anywhere until we find out who's done this. Well, with your powers of deduction, Elaine, that would be the 12th of never. What if I solve the crime? That's up to you, Justine. But whoever's done this will be grounded and will spend tomorrow cleaning the office. And if no one owns up, then you'll all be grounded. What? You've got one hour. One hour? Well, I'm not spending my Saturday scrubbing out the stupid office. Come on, own up. Who did it? Don't look at me. Look at me. I do. Pack it in, you lot. I'm trying to concentrate. On what? I'm drawing a detailed plan of the dumping ground so I can track everyone's movements at the time of the crime. Yeah, like that's going to help. Yeah, if I can't solve this, then I make this for the night. No change there, then. Please don't argue. Roxy, am I supposed to see Chantel tomorrow? And if Shelly doesn't let us go, someone's going to be very, very sorry. Chill, Roxy. I'll sniff out who done it. Yeah. Of course she will. Started. Motives. Which one of you lot would have a reason to commit such a despicable, yet genius, crime against Elena Payne? Mm, as I overheard a certain conversation this morning, I think I might already know the answer to that. Rebecca! Elaine! You really should watch where you're going. But you walked into me! I'm carrying things. Oh, never mind. I'm sure you'll remember next time. Next time. She's ruined my brand new top. Ruined it. Oh, she's gonna pay for this. So you've made Elaine pay, and now it's time to own up. Surely you don't think it's me, Inspector Moron. There's no denying it, Becky. You are so guilty. Right. You're gonna confess to Shelly or what? No, I am not, because I didn't do it. But whilst we're talking of motives, Roxy, I think you and Rio have some explaining to do. Come on, Arlene, there must be someone who wants to foster us. I'm sorry, Rio, but it's hard to find foster parents for a brother and sister, especially a pair with behavioural problems. What, are you saying we're rubbish? Of course not. You're both very special. Forget, Arlene, you're still with foster parents aren't good enough for us. Yeah, they're the rubbish ones. And so are you. But, but I, I, think, I think we should talk about this when you calm down a bit. Don't worry, Rio. We'll sort out the old bat in our own special way. We'd all shown it, Arlene the Paint. Doesn't mean we did it. Hmm. The plot thickens. Ugh. Oh, this is stupid. Yeah. Come on. One of you obviously did it. What? Well, you three weren't exactly nice to Elaine earlier, were you? More lemon. A lot more sugar. <coughs> oh, let's get Elaine! Mm. Delicious. That's the first successful cake I've ever made. Except you didn't make it. We did. And it took us ages. Thanks a lot, Elaine. It's for our tea. Mm, I'm very scrummy, it'll be too. Elaine! What? Mm. Mm. It wasn't us. Kind of wish it was, though. Oh, let's face it, Elaine had a coming to her. Yeah, she's managed to irritate everyone today. Including us. She really gets on my nerves. Oops. Something you won't tell us, Marco. <laughs> Don't let the bone be out What's you! What's going on in here? Shank attack, shank attack. Uh, that's enough of that. Millie, have you been in the treat cupboard again? Get your pearls of our treasure. You are not allowed to just help yourself to chocolate. about 
Tamerlane the pain walked the plank. So come on, Miss Marbles. Who done it? Mm, looks like um we've all got a motive. What about Alice? Don't be a muppet. Alice wouldn't do something like that. Yeah, you're right. She's probably chatting to a fairy friend. Oh, this is really stupid. Justine hasn't got a clue who did it. Why should we... Button it, Professor Plonka. According to my deductions, you're the prime suspect. So let's hear your alibi. What? Well, you had the motive and the opportunity. So where were you when Elaine got iced? I don't have to answer your daft questions, Justine, little brain. Rub that out. Rub it out! What about Roxy and Rio? Don't they need an alibi too? We done ice Elaine. Did we, Rio? No need. We're too busy getting our own back on her. If we were letting Elaine's ties down, we could have been in two places at once, could we? See? That's our alibi. Fair enough. Two down, six to go. What about you three? You can cross us off too. We'd already got our revenge. <laughs> I don't think she enjoyed her second slice of cake as much as the first. <laughs> so we're left with Marco and Millie, plus our prime suspect, Bexy, who won't or can't provide an alibi because she is guilty. I think not. Tell her, Crash. Crash? W weren't you with Jackie? No, because he was declaring his undying love to me at the time. You and Rebecca? That is the saddest thing I've heard all year. It wasn't like that. I was just helping her with her English homework. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Weapons. The person or persons who isolate must use a weapon to create that amount of force. OK, I need a volunteer. Of what? Well, in technical terms, it's called a reconstruction. <laughs> well, I'm not doing it. Exhibit A. Not a very likely weapon of revenge. Fire. Pathetic. Next, Exhibit B, or more commonly known as the Wellars weapon of choice. Fire. Oh! <laughs> Excellent shot. But. I think it's obvious that this gun wasn't used in the crime. OK, Exhibit C, Marco and Millie's pirate cannon. Fire. Oh. Busted. You little monsters. I think we can surmise that this was the weapon which iced Elaine. But we've got an alibi too. We were hiding our treasure from Bluebeard Boyack. <laughs> so you can cross us off that list too. Inspector Clueless gets it wrong yet again. Shut it, Becky. Oh, this is a waste of time. I've had enough. We've been so quiet. I did it. I was too scared to tell you earlier. But why did you do it, Iris? <laughs> What's up with you? Elaine wants me to go out with a new foster family. You don't believe in fairies. What am I going to do, Roxy? Can't you consult your crystal ball? I'm serious. Just tell them to stuff it. Oh, I couldn't do that. Take a leaf out of the Wellard book. We found that actions speak louder than words. <laughs> and 
nice one, Alice. So how'd you do it? Well, I borrowed Marco and Millie's pirate cannon. Added a few improvements. The rest was easy. Sorry, everyone. I wanted to get grounded so I didn't have to go out with any foster families, especially ones that don't believe in fairies. I don't want to leave. A lot of my friends. I'm not. Shut up, Roxy. Don't worry, Alice. It's going to be all right. Time's up. I want the guilty party to step forward. This is ridiculous. You're all going to be grounded. I want to talk to all of you about discipline. Justine, you can go. But now, please, this doesn't involve you. Right then. <laughs> Dean? Silly me. Looks like I won't be spending tomorrow on my own after all. <laughs>